right, everyone. Can you guys see me and hear me all right? I'm just doing an audio check, video check very quickly. For today's uh, video, we're going to be using the YouTube comments. So if you guys are in MIC, uh, please go to the YouTube comments. I'll be able to see that a lot easier. So this is kind of crazy, guys. I mean, here I was on January 3rd, starting the small account with, you know, $35,000. And my goal was to hit a million dollars by the end of the year. And to my surprise, you know, 55 days later is when I hit that million. And what I want to kind of show you guys is obviously number one is the broker statement here. So you guys can see the broker statement, you know, $963,000, which is crazy. Uh, and I also want to show you guys the list of trades that I took as well so that, you know, we'll go into it a little bit more in detail, but just so that you guys could see and compare the difference between, you know, the winners and losers for this account as well. So give me a second while I pull this up. One second here, guys. And I will show you. So I have it over here. So I just want to kind of make it nice and big for you. So if you guys pay attention and if you guys have noticed here, you know, my, I had one, two, three, six figure days, right? And I did not have a single six figure loser. You know, my biggest loss for this account was $75,000. I had a $43,000 loss. And from there, it's almost like my biggest win here was Bed Bath & Beyond. And my biggest win here was also Bed Bath & Beyond. So I made almost half a million dollars just off Bed Bath & Beyond, which was my A-plus setup. So Bed Bath & Beyond was my A-plus first red day, best setup which led to almost 50% of the profit. So what I want to show you guys here is recognizing what your best setup is because that best setup is going to is going to make your account grow. And if it wasn't for these two bad bath and beyond days, you know, I might have still been trading this for a while. So I also took one, two, three, four, no trade dates. So taking a no trade date pretty much means that I didn't see any opportunities to be able to capitalize on. And I just said, you know what, instead of, you know, losing money and forcing trades, I would rather just take it slow. So this month so far in March, I'm up about $40,000, which isn't bad. It's still pretty good. But the point of this small account, small account was to kind of just show you guys what is possible using the MIC process, the MIC strategy and sticking to risk management and, you know, following the process. So what I want to do is I want to kind of come on here and you know, give you guys the opportunity to ask questions, to see what you're struggling with. And if there's something that we could do to help your trading, I mean, hey, this is going to be op the opportunity. So we have MIC members here. We have non-MIC members here. And I'm kind of just going to open it up to everyone. I'm going to pull up a chart right now so that we could go through examples together so that if there's any trade examples that we want to kind of review, I'm going to pull that up too. So you guys should be able to see my chart here. And now, do you guys have any questions for me so I can start asking? I have the chat up here, so I'll be able to help and organize everything. So let me kind of start from the top and work my way down. Um, let me see. Okay, everyone can hear me. That's good. Okay, so first question is, do you use market orders or you do hit the ask? I mean, if someone is teaching you to use market orders, guys, um, that is the improper way of trading. That is FOMO based trading. That is trading based on following the alert and following the signal and trying to get in as fast as possible. And the reality is that I've never used a market order ever. I use limit orders exclusively because as a controlled trader, as a hedge fund level trader, I want to be able to trade the exact methods and the exact stocks when they get to my exact price levels. I only want to trade stocks when they get to my price levels. If I use a market order that is emotional, 
It's not, I'm just, I'm just winging it at that point. So I always use limit orders for everything. So if you're using market orders, then you're probably doing something wrong. Okay. Next question. Are these all shorts? Yes. I would say about 99% of my trading is short bias trading. The reason why I like shorting is because I think there's a really, really big edge in shorting because the stocks that we play, the small cap stocks that we play are pretty much lottery tickets for the average guy. The average guy that's trading these stocks wants to buy a stock like COEP at uh, $1.50 or $2. And hopefully, maybe if it goes back to $12, they'll be rich. But the reality is that these stocks are mostly scam companies. These stocks are pump and dumps. These stocks are not legitimate real companies. And because they're not legitimate real companies, that gives us an edge that they move based on hype. So if a stock is moving purely based on hype, then when the hype is done, the stock craters. It's been a repeatable pattern for you know almost a decade now. And the pattern is going to keep repeating because humans are going to consistently remain greedy and keep looking for more lottery tickets. So yes, 99% of my trading is shorting. And Bed Bath and Beyond is the perfect example, man. Perfect example. Twice. Twice in a row. Yeah. Push, crater, push, crater. So these are the kind of stocks I'm looking for. How much is your risk unit? So I don't use risk units in my trading. I The way that I trade a stock or the way that I risk stock is based on, for me, it's based on the probability of the stock. So I've been trading for a long enough time that I've, trade, I've tracked my statistics. I know exactly which stocks fit my criteria. I know exactly which stocks I have a high win rate on and which stocks I have a low win rate on. So depending on which stocks have a high win rate, that is how I aggregate my size. Now, how do I decide when the trade thesis is no longer active? That is when a stock is not following my plan. So on, so today we had COEP. COEP, my plan today was to short $2, 210. It was actually 190. 210 and $2. Let me show you. So 190, 2, 210. So my plan on this stock, COEP, in the morning was to short 190, 2, and 210. We got 190 and 2, and then in the afternoon, we got 210 exactly right there. The stop on this stock would be over here. If it breaks 225, if the stock broke above 225, that would mean that my trade thesis is no longer active, and that would mean that I would have to stop out of the stock. But it followed the plan exactly, 190, 2, 210, and you had two pretty good opportunities to make money on the stock today. So, yeah. Question one, am I single? Not anymore, my friend. I am dangerously in love with my girlfriend. How long have I been trading for? I've been trading for nine years, nine years. I started in 2014. My first year trading, I lost money. My second year trading, I broke even. And my third year trading is when I started to finally make money. Now, I don't think that there's going to be a three-year learning curve for you. When I first started trading, there was not this type of education out there. There was not this type of mentorship out there. So when I first started trading, I had to lose money to figure out what was working, right? So for me, the secret to trading, guys, is the more screen time you have, the more practice you have, the easier it's going to get. So I'm a nine-year trader, and that's great. I'm way better than a five-year trader. But Bao, who's been trading for 20 years, is way better than me. So screen time helps and having a nice strategy that consistently makes money like these small cap stocks is the cherry on top of the ice cream. Did you wire out your profits after a certain amount or did you roll your profits into a different trade when you needed to size up? So if I remember correctly, when I had my $350,000 uh, Bed Bath & Beyond trade, if I could just do the math very quickly, I had about a half a million dollar account at that point, if I remember correctly. So I had about $500,000 account with four times buying power is about $2 million in buying power. So I had plenty of buying power to trade that stock. And yes, after I had that big bed, bath and beyond trade, I wired out 
but pretty much kept the account solid, maybe wired out 10, 20,000 here and there just to kind of give myself a paycheck. But for the purposes of this account, I have pretty much just wired it back down to normal after I hit the million dollar mark. So up until middle of March, the account was pretty strong. But now, hey, man, I hit a million dollars. I'm taking that money. I'm putting it right in the bank, baby. I'm not going to keep it in the trading account because I no longer need to. For me, having a large balance in my trading account is almost a little bit detrimental. It's a little bit detrimental because it gives me a false sense of confidence. For example, if you have a $100,000 account and you lose $10,000, you're like, all right, $10,000, whatever. I'll make it back tomorrow. But if you have a $50,000 account, you can't really afford to lose $10,000. So I like to, after this challenge, reset my account back to normal and kind of get it back to where I feel is a good amount that says, hey, like I'm not going to be a jackass. I'm not going to screw around and I'm just going to keep my profits there. So for me, wiring out the account now that it's kind of the challenge is complete, but I'll still keep a balance of about maybe about $50,000 just so that if there is an opportunity that presents itself, I still have a little bit of capital to take advantage of it. Why did you choose that day you did for your Bed Bath & Beyond shorts? So that day is this day. So it was this day right here, if I remember correctly. So what ended up happening is Bed Bath & Beyond had a massive, massive squeeze this day. It had a massive squeeze this day because there were rumors that uh, it was no longer going to go bankrupt. So the company kind of ran up here and then kind of tanked down because they were announcing that there was going to be imminent bankruptcy for the company. And I think they came out with like a news catalyst or news PR over here that said that, oh, they're not going to be bankrupt anymore. And then in the after hours, the after hours that day, they came out and said that, hey, we're probably going to go bankrupt and we're going to have to do an offering to raise money. So the stock created from $7 to like $4, if I remember correctly. So my thought process was, hey, if these guys are going to do an offering and they're going to go bankrupt, chances are the offering is going to be a very, very toxic offering. So I shorted the stock pre-market on this day. And it just so happened that they announced an offering. I think it was at like $2.50. So not only did I short it pre-market and capitalize on the offering going down, the stock rebounded <laughs> like for no reason, almost up to $4. And then it crashed right back down to $3. So I caught the pre-market short from four to three. And then when it bounced from three to 380, I caught that short again for tw uh, a second trade. So this one I traded because it had a toxic offering, toxic dilution, toxic, toxic, toxic. And we were nailing this nonstop in MIC that day. With a $3,000 account, is it better to go, go blank or go short? I'm assuming you mean go long or short. For me, guys, for me, I primarily focus on shorting. So for me, I only want to focus on shorting. Yes, with a smaller account under $25,000, it is a lot more difficult because you have to be a lot more selective with your trades. But the reality is the same thing you do with a $35,000 account is what you do with a $3,000 account. Stock selection, draw your lines. Like for example, COEP, let's do this, right? So let's say COEP, the watch list, the watch list plan was 192 and 210. So if you trade the watch list today, 190 and two, you would have had a 195 average. If you would have had a $1 and 95 average, and you had a $3,000 account, and let's say you want to use 1,500 uh, of that account. So 1,500 divided by 190 means you would have had about 800 shares. If you scalped 800 shares for 10 cents, 10 cents, you made 80 bucks. And if you consistently do that day over day, month over month, year over year, maybe after the first year, your $3,000 account will grow to 25,000 and then you could take advantage of these better opportunities. How do you handle stocks that are hard to sell large amounts? And how do you know if they are hard to sell? How do you handle stocks that are hard to sell large amounts? How do you know if they are hard to sell? I'm not sure I understand that question, Carlos. If you want to rephrase it, uh, we could kind of revisit it. But if you mean, how do I decide my share size? 
my share size is based on the probability of the stock working. So for example, I mentioned this in today's video. So as a trader, if you do not know what your best setup is, then you do not have the ability to size into that stock. So if you don't know what stock or what setup or what strategy you make the most money on, how the hell are you supposed to know when to size up? So the first thing that you have to do is go back through your trades. I suggest using something like TraderView or something or an Excel or something to track your trades. that says, hey, every time this pattern shows up, there is a 50%, 70%, 90% chance that I nail this stock. So for me, it is based on the probability of the stock. So I mentioned today's video and I'll mention the same thing again. If a stock has a 50% win rate, I'm probably going to use 1,000 shares. If a stock has a 70% win rate, I'm probably going to use 5,000 shares. If a stock has a 90% win rate, I'm probably going to use 20,000 shares. But if a stock has a 95% win rate, I'm probably going to use 80,000, 100,000 shares. So first things first is find what setup you make the most amount of money on. And if you do not know that setup, then you're not ready to size up. And then based on that win rate of that setup, is how you could determine how much size to use. And you should size in exponentially based on the win rate of that setup for you personally. When you first started a $35,000 account, what was your risk level percent of the account? And what was your risk level now at the larger amount? So the way I trade, guys, again, it's the same thing. The same thing. It's based on the setups. So everyone has a method to their madness. Some people use like the R method, the risk to reward ratio. Some people use I'm only risking 5% of my account today. But for me, the way that I think about it or the way that I think about risk is based on the probability of the setup. So I don't really use R and R. I don't really use 1% of my account. I base my trades based on and risk on the probability of the setup. Now, as a more experienced trader, that's what I do. But if I was a newer trader getting started, I would not risk more than 5% of my account on a single trade, guys. I would not risk more than 5% of my account. For this exercise specifically, it was not based on like a 5% of my account. This exercise specifically was based on the probability of the setup working or not. What platform am I using? So the broker I'm using, guys, is Success Trader. So let me kind of show you guys that really quickly. So the broker that I'm using is Success Trader, guys. And the reason why we use Success Trader is not only for their commissions being almost some of the lowest on Wall Street for beginner traders. So zero to five million shares, 0 0.002 a share. Not only that, but they have seven built-in locate sources. So what that means is if you are a short bias trader, the hardest obstacle is finding shares to short. And Success Trader not only has seven built-in locate providers, they are releasing more and more every single day as those relationships get built and built and built. So for me, using a broker that has competitive rates, has unbelievable locates, has a trading starting at 4 a.m. And on top of that, as an MIC member, their rebates. So if you use a limit order, Success Trader will pay you 0.00025 a share, which means that you end up net profitable after using their routes. So essentially, I'm getting paid to trade with them, and you can too. And I get a monthly commission check uh, for rebates in my account. So let me actually show you my most recent rebate that I got from them. One moment. Let me see if I can find it. So every month I get a rebate and you guys could get rebates as well for using that. And the way it works is like I said, the rebate is used to offset commission. So if you're paying 0 0.002 and you're getting a rebate, this is my rebate. I got about a $9,000 rebate. So not only did this cover my commissions, it also gave me a profit on top of it. So if you are trading at a brokerage that is, is charging you a commission okay that's fine but you got to make sure that their rebates are a lot higher so if you're interested in success trader i talked to them today and they said that if you live chat them 
and you tell them that you were on today's webinar, they might even give you a commission rate lower than this 0 0.002 a share. So if you guys are interested, you could hit them up. It's going to be a special offer for everyone that is on this webinar right now. So let me pull back my chart. Okay, let's get back to the next question. Do you short a stock with good news or sometimes never? So this is a common misconception, guys. So a lot of these companies that put out news catalysts or put out uh, press releases are most of the time doing it to pump their stocks. So oftentimes it's a fake press article or fake news or whatever it may be. And, and after nine years of trading, what I learned is that the news itself does not matter. It is the market's reaction to the news. So they could say that they cured cancer and the company may tank. So that means that the market's reaction to the news was negative. So it doesn't matter if they cured cancer. The stock is weak. But if they may say that <coughs> they lost money on their earnings call, but that might push the stock higher because it was anticipated that they didn't lose as much money as they thought they would. So for me, when trading stocks with news, Yes, it's good to know what news is moving the stock, but your advantage is to understand how the market is indeed reacting to that news. Do you place fantasy orders? Yes. On the watch list, I tend to place fantasy orders. Uh, that's the best way to get uh, a piece of the watch list. So yes, I suggest that you guys all place fantasy orders as well. How do you get over the mental hub when trying to use more risk and more size? So the biggest problem is that when people try to use size, they're using it every single day. Like, oh shit, I'm using size today because I felt like making money today. Or I'm using size today because, you know, the sun is in the right place with the moon and there's an eclipse in the stars happening. And I have to use size this day because the moon shaman told me to use size. The reality is, guys, if you're Oh, getting a mental hump when trying to use size is often because you lack confidence in your setup. So for me on Bed Bath & Beyond, I wish I bulldozed in more size, man. I wish I bulldozed in more size. So the mental hump is primarily based on the fact that you do not trust your setup. You do not trust your strategy and you lack confidence. How do you get better? Keep executing that process, keep executing that strategy, keep executing on it over and over again, eventually you will get confident to say, all right, I saw this happen nine times. I saw it happen 99 times. And I know that the next time it happens, it's probably going to do the same thing. Are all A setups dependent on very high win rate, like first red day, or could one instead be based on very high risk war? Yeah, it could be based on very high risk war. But for me personally, guys, the first red day is a multi, multi million dollar opportunity usually. So for me, just capitalizing a little bit of it, that's, that's awesome for me. So for me, it's dependent on win rate. But yes, if you have a high uh, risk to reward ratio on a certain setup, that could be applied as well. But for me, I'm patiently waiting for those first red day setups. I have a small account and it's at TD Ameritrade. They don't have good bars and it seems like most of your trades are shorted. Can you do the same thing long? Number one is if you are a short bias trader, get the hell away from TD Ameritrade. You will not get shares to short at anything. So I would say do not sacrifice having a shitty broker for the, for trying to go long on these stocks because you could see that you know, most of the time these stocks are not going to go up. And guys, we're in a bear market. Okay. We're not in a bull market where stocks go up. We are in a bear market, which means that this is the best possible opportunity to make money on the short side. So forget the long side right now. Forget it. We're in a bear market. When the bull cycle starts again, yes, but we're in a bear market. So focus on shorting with a good broker. And again, that's why you should reach out to Success Trader. Hey, Alex, huge contrast. Remember I told you in person, Miami, you could make it happen before March? <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? It's it's nice to see you on the webinar. But yeah, I mean, now the goal is, fuck it. Let's go to 2 million, bitches. Let's go to 2 million by the end of the year. I don't know. Well, let's go to 10. Maybe I'll shoot for 10 and land at 2. Um, <laughs> you enter your lines and block out the noise, a.k.a. the tape at level 2, focusing on the caterns levels. Okay. Candles levels on patch. Okay, so the way that I explain this to people, guys, is number one should be the chart. 
Okay, so focus on the chart. So the way the reason why I use the chart is because the chart is a representation of the price action. Okay, so for me, what I like to do is let's say I'm using the COEP as an example because it was directly from the watches. What I want to do is if I know my line is at 190 and my line is at two, what I want to see on the level two is I want to see sellers at 190 and I want to see sellers at two to confirm the thesis. Okay, so having the line there, having the uh, the chart there, and having your plan, what you got to do is look at the level two at those key specific areas to see if the tape is matching your determined lines on the chart. So 190 and two, I want to see sellers on the level two at 190 and two to confirm my thesis. MIC is amazing. I love it. Been with them since January 2020 and way better trader now. Awesome, bro. Awesome. I'm so glad we're able to help you. So glad. Uh, what type of stock would you avoid as a short seller? Great question. So there are certain, get a notepad out. I will wait 10 seconds for you to get a notepad out. Okay, no pad is out. So I call these things red flags, okay? There's certain red flags for stocks that I avoid. Those red flags include, write it down. If a stock is SSR, short sale restriction, this means that the stock has a lot of opportunities to be manipulated. Number two, if a stock is a low float, okay? If a stock is low float, anything under 5 million share float, if a stock is easy to borrow, meaning that every single clown could short with a Robinhood account and day one. So these are the four red flags that I look for in a short. If any stock has more than one red flag attached, as an example, day one, easy to borrow, SSR, uh, low float. If it has any of them combined, that is a double red flag, double red flag. So. If you see any of these red flags on the stock that you're trading on the short side, you should either A, size down, or B, avoid it completely. Using the MIC watches and over PET, what percent should I be using? What percent should I be using with the MIC watches? Uh, in terms of sizing, like what's like how should you size it, or what percent of your account should you risk? So I'll answer both. So again, five percent of your account is the maximum that you should risk. And if it's a day two stock, you could look to get a little bit more aggressive there. So for me, the watches we've proven over the last year, over the last year that the watches has over a 90% win rate before 10.30 a.m. After 10.30 a.m., the stats go, it's different stats, right? So from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., we've proven that the watches has a 90% win rate, okay? So just stick to the watches. COEP was a watch. The stock worked out perfectly today. Do you ever suffer from paralysis by analysis? And if so, how do you overcome it? So to be honest, guys, I've actually never struggled with this because my thesis for trading has been, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. So I want to do the least amount of work to make the most amount of progress. So my thought process has always been less is more. So I would try to keep it as simple as possible. I don't use too many indicators. I don't do anything like that. But if you're kind of suffering by paralysis by analysis, you should be asking yourself, if that happens, it's probably because you're overthinking based on the fact that you don't have your plan set up. So for me, if you want to be able to avoid analysis paralysis, pretty much you have to have all scenarios already planned in your head. For example, what is your entry? What is your exit? What is your stop? What is your target? If you have all of those laid out, then there's nothing else to overthink. All you do is follow the entry, follow the exit, follow the stop, robot. Think about these algos, these multi, multi-billion dollar algos. All they do is buy a support and all they do is sell at resistance 100 million times a day, all day, nonstop. Robots are just programmed to do simple stuff all day long. So that's the way that I have to think about it pretty much. Uh, what does my morning routine look like? I haven't gotten this question in a very, very long time. And I'm actually, 
I guess, pretty happy about it. So let me explain what my morning routine was before I became fucking rich. So my morning routine back in the day when I was still grinding was I would wake up at 4 a.m. every single day on the dot. From 4 a.m. to about 7 to 8 a.m., I would watch pre-market. I would look at the top percentage gainers on the day. I would look at the news catalyst on the day. I would look to see uh, where support is, where resistance is, okay? And then by 8.30 a.m., I would have a plan. So from 4 a.m. to 8.30, I was monitoring which stocks were moving. I was looking at the news. I was looking at the chart, and I was determining a plan. By 8.30, I would already be on espresso number two, espresso number three. I would have my plan ready. I would sit there. I would write my plan on a post-it note, and I would attach it directly to my screen so that I know exactly which stocks to trade. So if I have five different stocks on my screen, each different stock had a different post-it note right there prepared for me. And then all I would do is robotically trade them until 10.30 a.m. and I would walk away. What I realized is for me, I actually love waking up early in the morning because it's quiet. No one's on their phone. The world's kind of moving slow. There's not really much traffic. And that puts me in like a zen place to be able to focus on, you know, deciphering the code of these stocks. Now I got lazy. I wake up at 7 a.m. So instead of waking up at 4 a.m., I do the same thing, but I wake up at 7 a.m., and I make the plan at 8.30. So I bought myself an extra couple hours of sleep after making a couple million dollars. But if you're first starting out, I highly suggest you wake up early. How often does Chuck Norris call you for life advice? Chuck Norris doesn't call me. Uncle Sam calls me all the fucking time. Motherfucking Uncle Sam calls me nonstop every day. Yes, Alex, you owe me a Bugatti this year again. All right, Uncle Sam, here's another fucking Bugatti. Like, goddamn. What do I consider low float? I would consider low float anything less than uh, 5 million shares in the float. Um, one second, guys. Would you consider $3,500 plus one year of MIC a decent amount to start day trading? Yeah, 100%, guys, 100%. So when I first started, when I first started, guys, I started with $2,000. I started with $2,000. I had to sell the rims on my car for $2,000 to fund my last account. And it's actually very funny. So I actually, let me see if I can find it. I even have the email, man. I have the fucking email that I sent the guy that I was trying to sell my car to. So give me a second. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so... So check this out. So check this out, guys. So February 26, 2014, the set of tires were 850 and the wheels were 1100. So 2000 tax. So I'm looking for 1800 if that's cool. So I had the email in 2014 when I was selling the wheels of my car, man. So it still gets me a little bit emotional because uh, I can't believe that that's what I did to get to where I did, but I had to sell the wheels of my car, man. So yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy how much my life has changed, but I really had to kind of put myself against the wall right there because it was either that or I can't fucking drive my car anymore. Right. So yeah, man, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy how much my life has changed, but um, yeah. So what we want to do for you guys today is we want to do something really special. So, you know, now that I grew my small account to over a million and you guys could see what was possible with this account, you know, we want to kind of send the elevator back down and help those that are struggling. So what we decided to do is for pretty much a special offer for you guys. So what we want to do is we want to give you guys the opportunity to join MIC for the lowest rate that has ever been in MIC history, okay? So this is uh, $99 to join MIC for your first month. When you join MIC for your first month at $99, you're gonna get the same watch list that I use to make all this money. And just so that you guys are aware, so that you guys see you know, what we do here at MIC, I wanna show you my verified broker statements. So I've made $8.3 million trading. 
I have all my broker statements, all my tax documents, everything here on the website. Same broker statement that you saw earlier is right here. So everything is legit. Everything is audited. Everything is there. Now, on top of that, guys, on top of that, what I want you guys to understand is you're going to get all of our MIC videos. You're going to get one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You're going to get our watch list. And you're going to get access to our community <clears throat> of other traders. So I actually met up with James Friedlander, who is one of our MIC moderators and day one in MIC. Before MIC, he didn't know anything about trading. And we turned him into a profitable, consistent trader, and he bought himself a BMW and all this other crazy stuff. And you know, I was talking to him, and I told him that the power of MIC is not only teaching you how to trade, but the power of MIC is also meeting like-minded people. So, for example, <clears throat> maybe you're the type of person that's very ambitious. Maybe you're the type of person that uh, wants to get better. But all your friends are either degenerates, alcoholics, or your friends don't understand what you're going through. Being in a community like MIC surrounds you with other people that are like-minded, that want to be better, that are real professionals in their real world. James is a business owner, right? James is a business owner. And now we're fucking best friends, right? All because of the community. So if you're lonely or if you're struggling or if you're kind of not really surrounded by the right people in the world, being surrounded in a community where other people are passionate about the same thing as you, which is trading, and other people are willing to help you with your trading, I mean, it's almost a no-brainer for me, guys. So you'll get that. You'll get all the videos. It's going to start at $99 a month, and then it's going to renew at $198, which is the cheapest it's ever been. You know, we even feature on Street Insider, Market Watch, Business Insider, Forbes, USA, NBC, Fox, CBS. And I want to show you guys that you're going to get my daily watch list. You're going to get access to the community. You're going to get all the videos. And on top of it, we're going to start you guys off with our seven-hour accelerator course. This is a course designed to take you from not knowing anything about trading to placing your first trade in seven hours. So whether you know nothing about trading, you never traded before, you don't know even how to click a mouse, we have a course designed for you. And then on top of that, we have plenty of testimonials other members that have been in other communities where they've been messing around with micro pullbacks, tiny pullbacks. Their mentors are vague. They got stocks in their IRA that you never heard about. They're trading Tesla all day. Like, I mean, guys, we've had horror stories of all different types of members going from all different types of rooms and all different types of communities. And, you know, they all learn at MIC because, you know, our strategy works. So if you guys want to see a preview of that seven-hour accelerator course, it's right here. And additionally, you're going to get an additional eight courses. You're going to get the Trading Fish Academy, which is Bao, my mentor. The guy that taught me how to trade is going to teach you how to trade with this course here. I have my live trading course where I literally, let me show you, I trade live, get the recordings of those live trades, and share it for MIC members. This is for lifetime members only. So these are my live trades. So you guys can see me making $67,000. In one day, trade stock is really looks right. weak. Right here, I see support of 1520. So chances are if 1520 breaks, it should go under 15. So I'm kind of just getting myself prepped. Maybe I'm gonna hit try to hit the bid at 15. So I have my live trades. These are just all crazy, crazy things, guys. But that's reserved for lifetime members. Trading basics. This is gonna be your foundation, guys. So if you're kind of after you watch the accelerator, after you've seen that course, trading basics is gonna help you get started. Day trading strategy, we're going to teach you our eight different trading strategies, long or short, both sides of the trade. We're going to show you everything. The fireside chats are exactly what it sounds like, expert guidance, Q&A sessions, coaching sessions. And what we've realized is trader psychology is the most important part of trading. If you're mentally not there, if you're mentally not sharp, then your trades are not going to be as sharp. And we teach you guys how to master your mental discipline here. All these things are included. If you want to trade options, if you want to trade large caps, if you want to trade swing trading, we teach you long calls, long puts. We teach you uh, shorting, naked, naked calls, naked puts. We teach you large caps. We teach you swing trading. And, hey, if you guys want to learn how to read SEC filings, we're going to teach you that too. In addition, we have all of these member testimonials, members making hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, members being green, you know, 3000 5000 But 
Something that I also want to mention, guys. Yes, this is for new MIC members joining in. This is the best, 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 biggest promotion that we've ever had. But also, if you are a current MIC member, if you are a monthly member, quarterly member, annual member, and you're curious about joining either annual or lifetime, I highly suggest you DM Steven in chat. And he's going to hook you up with a really big deal. The deal is very big and we can't publicly advertise it. So if you are in the community, in MIC, watching this and you want to go to annual or lifetime, just hit up Steven in chat. He'll hook you up. You can hit up Tosh as well. And yeah, guys, I mean, do you guys have any questions about MIC? Do you guys have any questions for me that I can help you answer to maybe make your decision a lot easier? I mean, to me, guys, if you're going to join MIC for $99 a month, I guarantee you're going to make that on your first trade. So it's crazy. I, I'm still surprised as to why we don't have 10,000 people in MIC yet. And my my deduction is because people just want pump and dumps. People want alerts. People want signals. And the reality is the fastest way to lose money is to follow someone's signals. But we post a watch list before the market opens. So there's no signaling, there's no market order, there's no, there's nothing like that. It's all strictly based on pre-planning your trades like hedge fund level traders do. So do you guys have any questions for me before I start to wrap up this webinar course? And there's so many times that I've had people say, hey, I joined this guy for $20 a month but I lost $10,000 trading. Can you help me? Bitch, you stupid fuck. Come on. People try to save $10 on their education and then lose $10,000 trading. Like, do you guys see how stupid that is? So, I mean, hey, try it for 99 bucks. 99 bucks, try it. Try it. If it's not for you, that's it. It's fine. But we're still going to be here trading every single day. We're still going to be trading with the watch list. Still going to be trading nonstop, guys. This is the biggest discount we've had in MIC history, guys. So do you have any questions for me before I start to wrap this up? I hope, I hope, I hope you guys are really starting to realize what is possible. This is real. This is real. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, guys. Eight mil. Eight the fuck and not only that guys not only that i mean just look at the reviews don't just take my word for it don't just take my word for it don't just take my word for it guys Is there a way that you could get access to the yearly deal? Yeah, you could just uh, either A, you could book a call with Tosh on the website, or if you're already a member in MIC, you could D DM Steven in chat. I just signed up today for the three months. Do I get access all that you talk about? Stephanie, I will give you uh, access to everything right now because you've already signed up for the three months. Why are you offering so low? Because I want you guys to try it and stop being broke. We don't have to do this stuff, man. I'm making millions of dollars trading. So I think that's it, guys. Unless you have any more questions, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. Try it. If it's not for you, okay, I'm sorry. $99, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. $99, it's not for you. That's fine. But at least you can say, hey, I gave it a try. I gave it the best possible opportunity that I could have possibly given it. I tried my best, okay? I tried my best. And if you've ever been in the place where you said, hey, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, just try it. Just try it. We are the only ones that come on here consistently that not only have our broker statements on the website, not only have our broker statements, but we show everything. We show everything. So unless there are any other questions, guys, please sign up using the website myinvestingclub.com slash small account. And please, if you have any other questions, ask us, reach out, and please 
We are here to help you. We are here to guide you. And we are here to give you the best possible chance for success. So thank you.